Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I've got Chuck Jones from Dopapod. He's the bass player from Dopapod. And uh, he's uh, graced us with his presence today so we can talk about, you know, his band and their upcoming tour and their last album. Chuck, let's talk, man. That tour's coming up. It's right around the corner. You guys are, yeah. you guys are heading west. Yeah, we're heading out to Colorado in about, I guess, two, two three weeks. Um, I actually, I, I currently live in Vermont with my wife and all the guys are in town right now and we're working on some new music which is exciting sweet now when you say in yeah. town does that mean Boston? what does that mean so we town? live in vermont we're um we live just outside of burlington uh-huh um so we're so the the guitar player rob lives here and then eli keyboardist and neil are both staying in my house and we're working on tunes oh cool yeah yeah it's a great deal I, I really want to go to Vermont. I've never been out there. And uh, to go to Nectars, I mean, for those that, that don't know, if you're not a fish fan, uh, tell tell us the significance. That's just, that's like where fish, as they were going to school at uh, UVM, that's like where they started, they got their start. You know, they were playing there all the time. They left yeah. house parties and that was like where they started picking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are, I read that you guys are all fish fans and it makes sense if you listen to 30 seconds of the music. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's, um, yeah, Nectar's is a really special place because when we, when we first started touring, we all went to, um, Berkeley College of Music in Boston. We, you know, we kind of stay in the Northeast, but I remember the first time I went to Nectar's, just even coming to Vermont, I was like, this is a unique, special place. And it had, it had a really good energy specifically for this scene, for like the jam music scene, whatever. Yeah. Um, I got my dopapod mug. Oh, nice. Hey, I kind of froze up there. Um, you started talking about nectars. That was a, that's a sweet mug, by the way. Uh, yeah, uh, a friend, a friend, we were like playing a festival and uh, this girl that makes these amazing mugs made these dopapod mugs. And I, it's, I love this. I use it all the time. Yeah, that's super. Yeah, I love that logo, man. So I just got, um, I just bought the, the most recent album. Um, cool. And, uh, Tell us, I mean, it looks like anybody that knows how to use Instagram is going to be able to like click, click, click. You can buy stuff here. You guys got a cool merch shop. Yeah. Um, yeah, really neat. I'm loving that last album, man. I've, I've been trying Thank to go you. through um, from the beginning. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys got a sound and a half, man. That's appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, and I love a quartet and I love a band that forms as friends and forms in school. Like, yeah. So this band out here, have you heard of ALO? Yeah. yeah. I I can't compare you guys. You guys are to it's totally different music, but like they did the same thing. They all they all formed in school and like I just just to see those guys you know get yeah. to where they are today. Like they're playing the film in, in a couple weeks. I think they're going to be on tour at the same time as you guys up and down the coast, but Oh cool. Yeah. Anyway, man. Um yeah, I, mean, I I couldn't really imagine being in a full-time touring band where you weren't good friends like sure. i just because the only thing i've ever done where i tour full-time is with the guys that are also my best friends like they're staying at my house if i didn't like them i wouldn't like them you know yeah um, no doubt but i i have you know other people that what whatever gigs like maybe they haven't been together in their bands the whole time and have like learned to hate each other but they just like there are lots of people in different situations where they just like don't they're not touring with their friends, you know, but yeah, they're, they're on tour, they're playing music. And yeah, I, I couldn't imagine doing this if you didn't like the people you were playing with, which is, is a scenario for a lot of people, but I, I don't think I could commit to what this lifestyle requires if I didn't like the guys I was in the band with. Yeah, especially on the road, right? right. Anything, recording, the road, just a simple show down the street, right? Yeah. I mean, I have some friends that are like in, you know, huge touring country bands where like they know the main guy, but they're just in his band. They play arenas all over the country, all over the world. And they like, you know, there's 30 buses on tour and they like it. Like they have, they have a great time. They have their little crew of people, but it's not like, you know, the touring with your friends and your band. It's like, that's your little family. That's your little, everyone's married to each other. It's your little like unit doing this very specific weird thing um that just i 
I, I don't think I could personally do it unless there's a few situations I could do it, but mostly I don't think I could do it if I didn't like everyone I was playing with and like on the road with. I, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Um, and, and it also, it's an interesting point. Like, I don't think, I mean, you guys couldn't make the music that you make, like, you know, you wouldn't be able to yeah. make that, that kind of music with a bunch of, I mean, you could with a bunch of strangers, you guys went to Berkeley, anybody can yeah. find that, that place, but yeah. Yeah, I mean that's something that we 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 acknowledge and we recognize that there's just a lot of things that we can that we're only able to do because we are friends. Like that's such a big part of, especially in improv music. If you're playing the same thing every night, if it's like a dictated set, you know, here's the eight bar solo for the guitar player in this song. You know, like you can phone that in. I'd imagine. You know? Yeah. But for us, like the biggest thing that we take very seriously and hold dearly is like the improv section where it's like. You know, it's kind of it's it's fluid. Some nights it's more open. You're everybody's just able to go with it more than other nights. But um, yeah, the only way that you can really access those like those moments of total freedom is with your friends that you've been playing with for for years. You like you know everything about each other. You like each other. You're willing to go into some unknown zone and just like trust that you're all paying attention. You're listening like you're going to reach an uncomfortable spot for a second. That's fine. Like just sit there, relax, take a breath, let it happen and like see where it goes. And you can, you can really only get to those, those moments, those very deep improv moments with people you trust and love. Wow. That's cool, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys are lucky. That's, that's awesome. It is. We are, we are very lucky. And I, I, you know, Often I'm able to remember that, but sometimes, you know, you have to remind yourself that. Cool. So um, uh, I wanted to, uh, to ask you, like, tell, tell the general public, tell a kid in California that, you know, might be able to see you guys. What, what, what is Dopapod? What, you know, what's it all about? <clears throat> um, the guitar player, Rob, mentioned a term recently for our genre, which I think makes sense, is uh, improg, you know. Improv improvisational prog music which i think is pretty accurate you know we're a, a band of add we play lots of different styles there's like heavy sections we've started incorporating a lot more bluegrass and it, it goes all over the place but the the main idea behind it is just sort of these you know long thought out uh, compositions and a lot of improv in between you know like there's just there's not one specific thing we stick to, but if, you, if you're going to come see us, you're going to see four guys on stage. You're going to see four friends on stage making very weird music that they believe in and that they're excited to share with people. Very good. Yeah. And so that leads to um, the, the upcoming tour. Um, what are you most excited about? You guys are, it looks like a bunch of dates in Colorado first and then yeah, uh, yeah. We start. We start in Colorado. We're doing uh, it, Boulder and Fort Collins, and then we have a, a day off, a day or two off, and then we sort of do like a loop through Colorado and end that little section in Colorado and uh, Fort Collins. We're doing two nights in Steamboat there at Old Town Pub, which my friend Sean is the uh, the owner of Old Town. Which uh, I live. My, my wife and I we lived in Colorado for about five years and I would play at this venue old town pub a lot with other projects, but I've never played there with Dopapod. There's oh, another place in town called Schmigadies, which I also love, but it's like, you know, it's two separate places. We'd always end up there when we would play there. So I'm, I'm actually really excited to play Sean's place, old town pub. And it's the, um, winter Wondergrass, which is their like winter bluegrass festival. Again, I was saying that we play some weird bluegrass sometimes, but we're doing like the two, after parties for winter wondergrass and oh, cool. yeah Very and then good. going west yeah i mean i'm just i'm i'm excited to play humble brews eli and i played there with our um our first tour we ever did i booked in 2007 with our old bands i'm from california so we like flew to my parents house in los angeles uh -huh. and we hooked a rental u-haul up to my dad's jeep and just like took it up the coast we played in like santa cruz it, it wasn't mose alley it was somewhere else we played in santa cruz maybe the catalyst 
it was it wasn't the catalyst it was like this tiny little weird room but we i just one of the places we played was humble brews so it's, yeah. it's fun to be going back there what you know 15 16 years later you know that's awesome i used to live right there like okay cool yeah one base yeah. but um that's and awesome we, man we just booked another um another show that I, we haven't really announced yet but um they got in touch with us and what's it's it's like we had one weird random day off it was like you know we played like thursday wednesday we had a friday off we just booked um well, i'm pulling up right now on the schedule we just booked in cave junction oregon bruno's tavern it's just like a new place that they're trying to bring bring music to this small town but those are those are like honestly my favorite gigs with us or with any other band it's like tiny little rooms yeah everyone's on top of each other that's like it's just you see some pretty amazing concerts and get to play some concerts that way yeah and uh, unsuspecting concert goers maybe stumble into the place i'll oh, check out this band and they walk away like what the that was awesome yeah and we have a lot of crap so like loading in a tiny room sometimes we're like okay i don't know how we're gonna fit half of our things on stage but we'll make it work and then you know it's always always an adventure to fit on the smaller stages but yeah i'm excited about that i'm just excited about being back on the west coast we end the tour in los angeles um i'm not going to see my mom she's actually going to be out of town um she's going with her friend to go see the northern lights in finland it's like been a oh. trip she's always wanted to do so she's gonna be gone but anyways i'm excited to see some uh hometown friends on the last day of tour the troubadour right yeah yeah sweet um good deal man so how so what do you guys how's the the tour um logistics like if you don't mind talking about that unless that just yeah yeah sure anything. um so we're doing um bandwagon they're a company out of indiana and it's sort of like drive your own tour bus sort of thing oh cool you don't need a cdl some people just drive their own we're actually we're, we're getting a driver through them for this run because there's just lots of long overnight drives that like we can't be playing and doing stuff all day and then driving yeah um so we we have a driver through them we have it's the four of us we have front of house um lighting tour manager merch and an audio engineer so there's what nine of us on tour with a driver there's 10 of us um and yeah we just we travel on this the bandwagon everyone is just kind of like you know there's a bunch of bunks on there and you're just in your own little tiny traveling house that goes everywhere it's not as fancy as a tour bus but it's uh it'll make or break or a, a relationship and a friendship <laughs> with someone. if you don't like yeah. the person you'll figure it out very quickly on one of those things yeah yeah i used to live on you know ships for like right yeah years. so yeah i get it but uh the road is how it was tenacious d the road is the road is, the road tough. is tough yeah the road is hard. yeah that's right um well i'm excited for you guys and i i really i'm gonna try to get to the troubadour because i haven't been there yet so uh cool. yeah so tell me about the album man how I mean, it looks it the, it looks awesome when you see it. I can't wait to get it in my hands. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, it sounds sounds radical. It's it's awesome, man. Thank you. I um we recorded it like right at the beginning of 2020. So we were like in the studio before COVID. Oh wow, yeah. That's like when we put the tracks down, and then that whole thing happened. So it, you know, that just sort of changed everyone's obviously it changed everybody in the entire most people in the entire world's life but we, we we started working on the mixing process during covid and at some point the idea came up to turn it into a board game because the guy that used to do the lights for us his name is luke stratton um he during covid got really into making online digital maps for dungeons and dragons so yeah. you know ultimately it's like you know you're in the theater of the mind there's not Traditionally, they didn't like have any physical playing pieces, but as it's evolved and especially playing online and with COVID where you weren't allowed to be around other people, the digital side of it really blew up. So you're, you know, there's a map, there's a dungeon master, you know, you're doing it online, playing over Skype. Um, but he got really into that. So at some point, the idea came up, like, why don't we turn this into a board game? And since we had 
someone on board that had the skills to do that and the passion and the know-how that came to be like, okay, yeah, let's do this. Let's turn this into a board game. And it developed over time of like, let's, since it's our seventh album, we'll call it Dopapod. It can be like a big infinity symbol. There's lots of symmetry, you know, palindromes. There's lots of all of that going through all of our music and just with lots of little tweaking and passion from a few people, it, it, it turned like the physical being of the album turned into that. Musically, talking about that, uh, we recorded at the beginning of 2020 and then did some overdubs and it just, it took so much time to actually produce the physical side of it that like, I think yeah, it came out what last year or so, two years later. And, um, you know, we were actually, we were talking about it yesterday, but I, I didn't love the recording process of that. I didn't, that wasn't my favorite, which was interesting. But then as we started mixing it and put it out, I hadn't like listened to it in so long that I just, now I love it, which is so weird because when we were recording it, I like I wasn't super into it. I was like, uh. yeah, and it, 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 it kind of changed. But now I'm like, I really like the songs. I really like everyone's playing. It's 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 it, I'm really proud of that now, um, which is great. I'd rather be that way. You know, sometimes you love stuff as you're recording it and you put it out. And you're like, I wish we didn't do that or I don't love it, but I'm much ha happier. It would have been nice to enjoy the whole process, but I'll take not enjoying the process and then loving the product, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, you know, that I listened to think, you know, first song and I'm, I'm, I'm almost through it. And I'm like, this thing is huge. This is a huge song. What, what's going to happen after this? Like it, it seems like That's that song go. in itself is like a full album, like a tiny little, yeah. just, it's great, man. I can't, yeah. can't say enough about it. And yeah, it, it definitely continues to, be boss <laughs> hey thanks we appreciate it. yeah we're, we're really happy with it and people it, you know uh people resonated with it which is which is cool you know and so dopapot you was that the only like so because it's seven letters like did That's you why it, it i mean there's a bunch there's a bunch you know you can you can unpack it however you want but like luke who i mentioned who helped design the board game he's he was on the road with us and like you know uh, arguably the fifth member of the band you know uh -huh. like they talked about that for Kuroda with fish but he was doing lights for us and just i mean he helped us with like so many behind behind the scenes things um but he has moved on to other things so it sort of made sense to like tie up his time with us with double pod it's like this is our seventh album seven letters like just there are a lot of reasons to name it double pod and there's okay, a lot of cool, things about yeah. the album musically that i think sort of represent everything we do yeah well yeah i'll leave it you know up for people's imagination like yes yeah, so that's just what it is yeah um that's cool man so i guess yeah that's the album that's the tour i'd love to get to know chuck jones and and from from when you started playing the bass and how you got a bass in your you know in your hand yeah, yeah. um when did you start playing music so the first time I, my mom and dad are both musicians or my dad's past, but he was a musician. Um, and they always played piano. So it was music had always been in my family, but to be totally honest, the reason that I played bass or I picked up bass is when I was in, I was like eighth grade. Yeah. I was in eighth grade and this guy was in ninth grade and his name was Mark Obayashi. He was so cool. He was like this cool guy and he was playing bass and I was like, not a cool kid. He had this like a girlfriend, he had the whole thing. So I was like, <laughs> and he was like the only person that was nice to me from ninth grade. He played bass. So just like something about his being, I was like, I want to be like Mark. So I wanted to play bass and I went in and out of all sorts of random hobbies and things I was super into growing up. And one day we were walking around Old Town Pasadena and there's a, uh, pawn shop there and i saw a bass in the window and i was like mom i want to play bass will you buy me that bass and she's like no absolutely not <laughs> and i just bugged her i was like please please buy me that bass she's like i'm not buying you that bass huh. i bugged her for a few days and eventually i just wore her down we went back and bought this shitty like p relic bass and this shitty amp and i went back to my house and i I think I don't remember the first song I learned, but I think it was a Green Day song. But I took highlighter and I highlighted like the top 
part of the fretboard where my hand was supposed to go as I learned this song using, using tabs or something. Yeah. And that, and that was it. That like started the whole the whole thing. I became obsessed. I bought a Rage Against the Machine tablature book. I learned all of every one of their albums. And uh, I had a few friends in high school that were also into music. So as I got into high school, ninth, 10th, you know, all those grades, every weekend I'd finish school and I'd go over to my friend Ryan's house and just play music and record. So from there, it became obvious that that's what I cared about. And that's I went, yeah, and I went, I went to um, Berkeley College of Music's five-week summer performance program in 2004. And that's actually where I met Eli, the keyboard player from Dovapod. Uh -huh. we, we were both 17 and we were in an ensemble together and did our thing, went back, finished senior year of high school and I got accepted to Berkeley, went to Berkeley and we ran into each other on the street one day. I was looking, I wanted to start, I, I got really into Medeski, Martin and Wood really quickly. Nice. And I was like, I want to start that band. Like I want an organ guy. So I was like ah. hanging up flyers around Berkeley looking for an organ guy and I ran into Ego, Eli like crossing the street in front of uh Berkeley and I was like oh dude good to see you like I'm actually looking for a keyboard player like we should jam and I handed him this you know physical thing I printed out and here we are whatever you know 17 18 years later yeah that's awesome yeah so um I gotta talk about Berkeley so yeah. uh you must have you must have had Danny Morris as a as a teacher oh yeah Demo is my, he's my dude. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's great, man. I was, so I was taking online classes with him in 2006 and seven. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's that's like good. around the same, same time. The same exact time. Yeah. I was taking base 101 and R and B and, uh, Oh, cool. And I, I I took jazz with Jim Stanat. And was he there when you were there? Yep. Yeah. Um, he was no he was no BS. Oh. That's what I loved about him. Yeah. You showed up and you weren't prepared. He's like you in class in physical class. Like if you showed up and you didn't practice, he knew right away. He's like you can leave. He would like kick people really? out of class. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like that. Well. Yeah, nowhere near like uh what's that movie with the, the drummer uh oh yeah the i mean, I mean it can't be anything close to that like throwing i mean he's reading he's like he's like you're wasting my time and yeah. wasting your time he's like you didn't practice because whatever reason but like don't be here we're gonna work on this leave and you kick Good. people out so like yeah it's yeah. freaking Berkeley. it's you know there's a reason it's one of you know the best music school in the yeah uh yeah, but Dan, danny we still we still talk a lot and um he's like he was a very serious you know, you get to Berkeley and there's just so much everything. I thought I was going to go for jazz performance. I didn't actually end up wanting to do that. Finding Danny and like, he's the one that introduced me to, uh, to like Motown. You know, I took his Motown lab and all that. And I just like, I found, obviously there's a bunch of bass players, but he was like really resonating with me for like playing specifically like understanding and really learning bass lines, you know, like old funky bass lines. He's, at the time, he was super into Phil Lesh of the Grateful Dead. I didn't grow up listening to any jam music. Mm -hmm. That's one of his favorite bass players. So, like in lessons, yeah. he'd be like, "Let me let's talk about Phil Lesh." And I was like, "I don't, I don't care about that. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to talk about this guy." And years later, after I'm in a jam band in like 2015 or 16, I started finally listening to him, and I was like, "I get it now. I understand what his why he loves Phil Lesh." Yeah, that was like always the strangest thing for me taking lessons with him I was like why it's like you listen to like James Jamerson and teach a lab and I'm like why do you listen to this guy that plays the wrong notes like every other <laughs> like it's, it's or he purposely skips the one that's where you know and I I couldn't hear that at first I was like he's doing what but it's pretty rad I mean yeah he's uh he really is uh Phil Esch really is a very special and unique bass player and if you're able to spend some time and get past the rough edges every now and then yeah really a lot going on with his tone playing everything yeah um i i do want to talk to you about if we're you know since we're talking about phil phil lesh uh i'd be remiss if i didn't bring up uh mike gordon and it looks like you just got to meet him was that the first time you met him or had you met him before 
Yeah, we um I hadn't met him before. He lives, he's in Burlington. So we were at uh we were at a gig together and he was just like in the green room and we started talking. Um yeah, that was the first time we met. Really nice guy. Sweet. And yeah. um what was the what was the gig? Was have you heard of a band called Neighbor? No, no. They're great. It's um it's some Boston dudes. It's Lyle Brewer on guitar and Dean Johnson and Ricky um on keyboards and Dan on bass, but it's just like it's some old guys. Like the reason they're called neighbor is they grew up next to each other. All actually our neighbors, a lot of them grew up next to each other. And during COVID, they were just like started sending stuff around. So they started during like three years ago and have really got a lot of traction in the last few years. So they were playing at Nectar's. I wanted to go. They invited me to come out and play some music. Um, and it, I, I really, really like that band. But that's he was there too because he's a. Uh, it seems like he's going out to some concerts now around town. Like we were at Higher Ground last night, and he was hanging out there too. So he's starting. Oh, sweet! Right on. Gets out yeah. there. Yeah. Well, that's got to be fun for. Yeah, he's, for fans. he's super nice guy. You know. Oh, cactus. So, um, what? Uh, it looks like you play. Sarek basses is that exclusively like no dude I just look at I got it right here I just got this it's a dang dude I just got it so um a friend of mine did I say that right Sarek Sarek yeah Sarek yeah he's a I think he has a team of people now but he's uh he's out of Chicago and for a while he was doing it by himself and we we were like I was talking to him about getting a bass four or five years ago 2018 I was like looking through my email but um he blew up rightfully so and his wait time is like now like a year and a half and i'm like i can't commit to i'm just my brain doesn't work that way of like if i ordered a base now a year and a half from now everything would change like there's no way that what i want now is going to be then oh yeah but uh, a friend of mine knew someone else that was selling this base and he knew he plays Sarek too he's like my friend's selling this base he doesn't he's not into it so it just sort of lined up that this thing was like ready to go and i'm also just a fan of leopard print and white things uh, so yes yeah. it's cool this is a it's 32 inch so it's like a medium scale base and yeah it's it really it's a special special unique thing i've never bought a base without playing it ever uh -huh. yeah i bought this from the guy and it's like everyone everyone that picks it up they're like oh, good job that's a nice base yeah nice it's not too it's not too heavy no, it's it's lighter. So that's that's I just got that. But what I've been playing for since 2013 is this P uh Maloon P. Okay, that's the one thing. I recognize, yeah. Yeah, I've been playing this for I got it in 2013 forever. And, and I love this bass, but got the built for Chuck Jones in the oh, back. Oh nice, dude. Yeah. yeah they're, great. They're, they're out of South Korea. Um so yeah, it's, it's weird. I'm a, the only bass I'm going to bring on the next tour is that five string, which is I haven't not taken this one on tour in like. You don't 10 take years. A, not even a backup. You don't, or is that just something that happens on the road if you need one? No, I'll I'll I uh I have a I have a fretless from the loon too that's in Colorado, so I'm going to bring that oh. with us just in case. And but yeah, I just I really want to commit to the the new bass and like it's my first time having a five string. Is that passive or active? Is that active? All passive. All passive. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. Dude. Um, it has a push pull for series parallel pickups, but it's all passive electronics on there. Is that is that what you prefer? Yeah, I like passive because I, yeah. I use a lot of pedals too. Um, and you know, it's, pedals don't respond if you're putting a ton of juice into them. You know, gotcha. the same way. They respond the same way. Yeah. But, and so when you record, um. <sighs> pedals you got a lot do you, you have a lot of pedals huh yeah I, I a decent amount um my friend john anyways he's like the pedal lord and we were <laughs> hanging out yesterday and just he's he has all of them and is so good with them i have my like i have my little setup that i'm really comfortable with but yeah i'm i'm a big advocate of different sounds no matter what you're playing you know yeah 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 i saw oh, the playing music is you're just playing sound so if you can like change your sound it's just it gives you more options for what you're able to do you know yeah yeah i saw like i watched it was like one of your one of your guys's more popular videos i think it was like a peach 
Uh, I'm not sure which one it was on YouTube, sure. but I saw you like you guys were going into some kind of jam and you you went to press something and you started playing it and I, you like stuttered. You're like, should I change that? And you just kept going with it. And it nice. sounded super, super funky and bubbly. And like you looked at Eli and you like grinned and then you just kept going. <laughs> it was rad, man. Yeah. It's imagine like, that's so much fun. It's like an experiment every time you you kind of. Yeah, it's and it's cool. You know, you, you play the sounds, you turn on something and it's like what I was playing doesn't now work with the sound. So like, yeah. how can I, I, you know, an easy example is delay. If there's a lot of, if you have delay on your notes now and it's like, you know, you're doing a dotted quarter or whatever. It's like, it's probably not going to work anymore. So you have to kind of adjust and play with that sound, which is the whole, you know, again, all we're doing playing music is just playing sound. So that's, that's awesome. like, I, I really, really like having pedals just to open, open different sonic corridors, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. I was going to say, we don't have time to talk about all that. That could be a whole nother interview pedals, pedals yeah. and gear, but, um, well, I'll, I will show you that, uh, so I, I work with Balloon a lot, but they just sent me this thing, which I'm very excited about, which is their envelope filter. Oh, dude, that's very, very shiny. Yeah. Very. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to plug that in today. It showed up yesterday, so I'm, I'm very, very excited to try this out today. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Chuck, we got a minute left, man. Um, can I, let me ask you, like, I don't know, what, what would your advice be to young people, um, a young bass player that you know, has this vision, like, I want to be in a band like Dope Pod, or I want to, I want to do this and that, you know. Play as much as possible, and take the music seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Mm. That's like, I think, uh, Colonel Bruce Hampton, I think, was the one that coined that term, and there's, you can unpack that however you want, but ultimately, respect, respect the music, but don't, don't take yourself too seriously, you know, we're just up there playing sounds your friends hopefully yeah if you're lucky like you guys yeah if you're if you're lucky and you can play with your friends absolutely rad chuck i we're gonna get cut off any second i thank you so much for this absolutely and thank this is great thanks for having me yeah thanks man and thanks thanks your team and i i uh i look forward to seeing you guys cool we'll see you in california okay see you chuck